Hi folks, today I wanted to show you how to calculate the uncertainty region of an asteroid, and specifically asteroid 2012 DA14. Now I've done this before for several asteroids, including 2012 DA14, but today I wanted to take you through the process and show you how it's done. So right now you can see my desktop, and you can see FindOrb currently generating a series of Monte Carlo solutions based on amateur data of the asteroid's position. So what it's doing is it's adding an, a small amount of Gaussian noise to account for the fact that when you measure the position of the asteroid at any given point in time, you don't know the exact position of the asteroid. You know it to maybe plus or minus half an arc second in most cases, or plus or minus an arc second if the seeing is particularly bad. Uh, basically, the atmosphere will distort uh, your image a little bit. You'll get uh, some atmospheric seeing, some turbulence, and the end result is you can't know the exact position of the asteroid to perfect certainty. Uh, there's also the matter of your own telescope's resolution. Uh, your telescope may be limited to half an arc second or in some cases a little bit more than that. Uh, but these amateurs that I'm using uh, have excellent equipment, including the Sandlot Observatory, which you see highlighted here right now. Uh, these guys have very nice equipment, easily equal to my own equipment, or better in most cases, and are capable of resolving down to half an arc second or better. And so when you just plot their data without any noise added at all, you end up with a root mean square error of about three quarters of an arc second, which is a pretty tight fit. But truth be told, it could be each of these positions could be off by plus or minus half an arc second. So to be generous, I've added a full arc second of uh, Gaussian noise at maximum to each of the measured positions of the asteroid. And every time it adds that noise, it tries to generate an orbital, orbital solution based on the result. And that's why you see the orbital elements here in a constant state of flux. And if the root mean square error is low enough, then that means it's a possible solution. Uh, for the orbit, and it saves that solution. In most cases, the end result is going to be nonsensical. Uh, it simply uh, won't resolve to a sensible orbit because it is just random noise, and so most of the time it's going to be wrong. But every once in a while, it will be plausible, and if it's at least plausible, if it's physically possible, it will save that uh, solution, and in the end, you'll have a large series of possible solutions that fit the original data and even fit the original data with some noise added to account again for the fact that uh, uh, each measured position has a little bit of uncertainty to it. So when this is done I'll save these solutions and take them to my desktop which is currently running Linux where ORSA is ready and waiting and uh, we'll display the, the results in ORSA and see where each of the positions are in relation to Earth. Uh, the epoch of the solutions it's currently generating is uh, February 15th, 2013, which is the date of close approach, and the gravity of the various planets and even the asteroids are already being accounted for. Uh, you can see they're all checked and, and uh, running, so it's taking all of that into account uh, when it's generating these orbital solutions. So with that, I'll stop this video here and uh, take these solutions over to my desktop and we'll pick it back up with ORSA and uh, see where these positions end up relative to Earth on the date of close approach. Alright, so we're back. The calculations have now completed and we're ready to look at the uncertainty plot of 2012 DA14. So, again, just to show you new integration of the same objects, so you can see the objects again they're all there, including uh, the one that we put in there of the official orbit to see where that is in relation to uh, the uncertainty plot that we generated. So we'll load up the 3D viewer now. We'll center it on Earth. Turn on orbital display. And zoom in. So each of the blue dots, which you can't really see at the moment, but attached to each of these green labels is a tiny blue dot right about there for that one, which represents a possible position of the asteroid. The green labels are just uh, labels of which uh, Monte Carlo solution it is. And then the one that uh, we created for the official orbit, of course, I added all those underscores to make it stick out so you can see where it is in the uncertainty plot. It's right there in the middle of the plot, basically. 
So in other words, uh, the uncertainty plot is in agreement with the official orbit, which is close to the center of that plot. Uh, the further out towards the tails, the less likely it's to be at one of those locations. And because this is using just amateur data alone, it's a lot more uncertain than if you include all the data, including professional sources. Uh, way more uncertain, because you are looking with uh, far fewer observations. But based on those observations, we can see if there's any chance of impact with Earth on February 15th. So we'll move time along here. Uh, the simulation starts at midnight on February 15th. And let's uh, see if we can zoom in on Earth some more and see what's happening. So the asteroid approaches from the south. And here we go. We can see where the official orbit puts it here. The uncertainty plot with the amateur data puts it at any position along these uh, blue dots, including where the official orbit is. But the blue dots do not intersect Earth. As we saw before in uh, the video that I did in March on uh, 2012 DA14, the possible position is the asteroid come like a wave up behind Earth and over Earth. The uncertainty is in just how close it gets to Earth. It's not whether or not it hits Earth. There's no question there. You can also see where the moon is in relation to the uncertainty plot. The moon's over here. The possible positions of the asteroids are way over here. So even with the uncertainty in the amateur observations, there is no question that it misses the moon, and there's no question that it misses Earth. Earth's here. Possible positions of the asteroids are back here. So the night side of Earth gets a view, a nice view of it as it goes by. And that's primarily Australia, India, China, uh, Saudi Arabia gets a view too. Europe will get a view of it a little bit later. And then finally, uh, the eastern portion of the U.S. rotates into view where they can see the asteroid as well later in the night. So that's that. That's how you calculate an uncertainty plot. And again, this is with just the amateur data. If you use uh, professional data as well, you get a much tighter plot, uh, a much smaller uncertainty region. In fact, at this point, uh, it would be quite tiny because we've uh, acquired a new observation of the asteroid on January 11th. And because that is spaced out almost a year from the original observations, it gives you a nice baseline of time and helps you eliminate a lot of possibilities. And after it passes Earth, these points start to fold and spread out even more. And you can see these white lines represent a two-body solution of the orbit. It's not how the program actually calculates the asteroid's position, but it gives you an idea of uh, the uh, Keplerian elements for a given moment in time, basically. And as you can see, they spread out because the uncertainty increases after a close encounter with Earth. Based on how close it gets to Earth, uh, it could be more or less perturbed by Earth's gravity. So if you're not sure of how close it gets to Earth, you're even less sure of where it is after it passes Earth, which, which is why it's uh, very important to acquire as much astrometric data as you can during a close approach. It helps you really nail down the orbit for the future. But uh, we've already been able to nail down with professional data uh, that there are no possibilities for impact within about the next 100 years or so. And after the February 15th, we'll have tons more data from observers all over the world, both professional and amateur, and we'll have an even better idea of where it's going in the future. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a nice day.